the ghost town we just checked out is in the valley down that way. And I'm up where they were constructing, in the process of constructing an absolutely enormous mill uh, before this whole project was abandoned. Uh, just to give you a sense of how large that is, that's the, uh, that's spe that blue speck off in the distance is the Lada. So uh, hopefully that gives you a sense of how huge this mill was going to be and uh, what you can see now is. And that road wrapping up there, that leads to where the mines are. So we'll head there now. Okay, we're in a mining camp here and we've arrived at the mines. There's uh, an added up there. And there's one down at the end there near where I parked. Just wanted to show you a little bit of the mining camp here because I thought it was interesting. This one's in better shape than the area down below. The scrappers apparently didn't feel like coming up here. See, there's actually still some uh, intact furniture and things like that here. 1981 is the date on this. Don't know what that is. See the miner's helmet right there. Oh, this is empty. Nothing there, unfortunately. And this is empty here as well. There's a more permanent structure right there. And uh, some equipment over here. Interesting, it's tracked. They probably would have needed that for the winters. see many like this too. Here's a look inside. You see there's nothing electronic in here at all. That's interesting. There's the front. The operator would have sat up there obviously. This is that permanent building here. Take a peek inside. Just came in through there. And it's hard to tell what this was. It's almost like a cafeteria window right there. Could have been an office as well. Hard to say. I just came up these stairs here to see what was up top here. And absolutely nothing is the answer. See the remains, it looks like a generator out there, which would have been where their electricity came from. All right, moving along, checking out more of these caravans. Go take a look inside this one. Some uh, stuff in Russian here. Or I assume it's Russian. And over here, got something in Chinese characters. I know the Chinese came here for a little while after the Soviet Union collapsed, so it looks like we're seeing some of their leftovers. That's a little odd. Bones right there. Somebody's toothbrush, lemon vodka. There you go. Looks like a couple medicine bottles. Can't tell what that is. And a little teapot. I don't know what that is. Maybe traditional Chinese medicine or something. Who knows? There's something interesting about this next caravan. And that you can still make out the uh, CCCP on it. 
And I can't make out what that says there because it's too faded, but there's the uh, the mine symbol right there, the national mine symbol. That's really cool. I wish this wasn't so faded. More of the equipment here left on the site. Go look in this window here. Yeah, not much in this one at all. But over here is this really cool truck. Okay, we're just checking that out. And we've got this really cool truck here. I don't know if anybody can make out that logo. I don't recognize it. And it looks like there's a old carbide can right there. Another view of the truck. See that canvas uh, top right there. And yeah, probably not going to be driving this one for a while. That Marlboro sticker is kind of funny. And then behind us here, next to the Lada, is the first audit we came to. Okay, there's a mining camp. You can see there are some tanks or something here. And here is the audit. First audit we're going to go check out. Uh, it looks like it's flooded and unpleasant here. But you know what I realized? <clears throat> it's frozen solid. You can walk right across it. Which is a nice treat for us because we're used to going to these nasty flooded mines and needing waders and such. See the rocks sitting on top there? So here's the first look. You see where the track ties were. Sorry, I'm going slow. It's a slippery. And it looks like there is a small cave in up ahead. But uh, I think I can scramble over that. So let's get into things here. Heading in. There's some pretty impressive concrete work here. And uh, we've already lost the ice. We're back to liquid water because the uh, temperature underground, of course, is the constant. And in this case, it's above freezing. So hopefully it's not a bunch of water behind this cave in here. Uh, there is, but it, the rails are still above it, so I'll continue on. Here's a look at that section that came down. And I'll pick up down there. Carrying on down the attic goes as far as I can see. I'm hoping it gets above the water, too. Well, my wish was granted. We've finally gotten above the water. Usually you get the most amount of water near the portal, so I'm not too surprised that we uh, have gotten out of it. There's always a slight downward angle to the mines to make it easier for the water to drain and also for the ore carts, the, the loaded ore carts to come out. Pretty impressive concrete work in here. Little pocket to the left there, and the right. Not sure what this remains of. These rails are pretty beefy. They're about the size of regular train rails, like a narrow gauge railroad. Pretty impressive. Still carrying on, and looks like there's an explosive buck here. Actually, it says explosive in English, too. Interesting. I'm assuming those are the remains of vent bags on the right. And it looks like we've got a junction here. See some pipe on the ground there. Yeah, we got some options here. Man, it's really dark in here. I know mines are always dark, but uh, this one. Everything's black in here, so it just swallows up the light. Good echo, though. See different pieces of equipment here. 
There's a trench for draining. Okay, so rail keeps taking off that way and bends around there. Uh, there's this empty chamber here that just runs back there and uh, goes around the bend. I don't think there's anything back there. That's the portal off in the distance. And looks like there are the remains of a workshop or something like that here. Wow, look at all those uh, nuts and bolts there. That's interesting. I'm assuming that might have been an explosive box. There. There. Yeah, I'd say it was just definitely a workshop. Well, let's keep heading down the main at it. That's the workshop we just checked out. And I've decided to continue down this main adit here. It's been more of the same for a while, just uh, bending and twisting through the mountain. I stopped here to show you the uh, slag tights hanging down, which I thought were kind of cool. And uh, that insulator there would suggest they had a pretty significant electrical system here. So, keep carrying on that way. I've come to a chamber where things widen out here. And it uh, looks like there's another little workbench here and some equipment. They've got a good drainage system. It's working the way it's supposed to. You see the water's shunted off to the side here and is flowing out, which is what you want. There's some of the uh, stuff on the workbench. I'm not even really sure where to begin with this one. But if you go back, turn the volume up, and listen to that last section again, where I abruptly tapered off, you'll hear this otherworldly scream, or howl, coming out from deeper within the mine. I am extremely skeptical of the supernatural, but hearing that made all the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It creeped me out. And I'm back in Italy now, had the passage of time to reflect on what that might have been, and I still have no explanation at all. That was really bizarre. Um, I've asked miners and other specialists what that might have been. People have a lot of underground experience, and no one's got a good explanation. It definitely wasn't wind. Wind would be the first thing you would think of, uh, but there was no wind at all in there. There was no airflow, no air circulation at all. I was standing right in the middle of the attic where you definitely would have felt any wind. There was nothing. Um, I could see the snow outside. You saw the snow in front of the attic. No tracks at all whatsoever. Just mine. And I, that was true when I came out too. There were no tracks at all. Uh, it wasn't ice fracturing or anything. It was just water back in the mine by that point. Um, rocks falling. I've never heard rocks make a sound like that falling. I went all the way to the end of the mine too, as you'll see in the video. And there's nothing in there. There are no animals or people in there. So it wasn't that either, if that's what you're thinking. With no airflow, that doesn't connect to any other workings either. It's not like that's a sound coming down from above. Plus, there's absolutely nobody there anyway. You see that from the snow. You would see if there were tracks and there's nobody there. I was reluctant to even post this just because I didn't want to get accused of doing some clickbait thing. Because I'm totally not about that. Uh, which is why I downplayed this in the title and I'm not making a big thing about it in the thumbnail because trust me I could make a big viral video out of this and that's not my intent at all. If I was actually trying to make a viral video I would have dubbed in some you know ghost noise I found online or something but I am happy to and it would have been better audio than that. Um, I am happy to email anybody the original raw file of that for analysis because if somebody's got an explanation, I'd love to hear it. Um, I have no problem subjecting that to scrutiny. There are reports of some weird stuff in that area too. Uh, like I said, I'm really skeptical about all this stuff, but there's supposed to be a big UFO crash that happened there in the uh, 1990s uh, at a place called Devil's Grave, which is uh, very close to there. You can uh, you can Google that. Google Engelcheck plus Devil's Grave, and uh, I bet it'll come up. So. I'm not the first one to uh, report weird things back there. 
But again, I'm very skeptical. I'm sure there is a rational explanation for that, but I haven't thought of it and not many other people or nobody else I talked to could either. So if you in the audience have any ideas, I would absolutely love to hear them because that was a very bizarre incident. That was creepy. Kind of tapered off to the end there because I heard this weird noise deeper inside. I'm not sure what that was, but we'll uh, hopefully go find out. It's getting a bit damp back here. something written up there. I'm not sure if there's any Russian speakers in the audience or not, but so maybe they can tell us what that says. Uh, I see more stalactites there. We're into some uh, steel sets right here, and looks like there's some fork up here. And that's a big tire right there. Actually, that was a mix of timber and steel right there. This section here a bit rough. It looks like some material came down at some point along there. This fork looks like it goes to a cave in there. And uh, this one looks like it keeps going. Here's a look at the rail at this junction here. I'll just look down there real quick. It looks like it gets kind of nasty. I'll just double check, see how things look. So the equipment and stuff just sitting around here. You can see how they reinforce the concrete there. Yeah, that looks caved back there. So I'm gonna head down the uh, main drift still because that one looked more promising. This weird box is hanging right here. Continuing down the main drift. As you can see, we've left the concrete lined at it behind and have now gotten into the uh, solid rock here. So we'll keep pushing on and see where this goes. I've been carrying on for a while. You can see there's some sort of large cave in up there and I hear a lot of rushing of water. Next to me here is a piece of equipment that I don't recognize, so maybe some of the audience knows what this was. But I'm not sure. So I will uh, push up to that section there and turn the camera back on. Well, that is caved to the very top, so that is the end of the line for this one. I'll head back out now and we'll go to the uh, next edit that we saw up above.